guys, welcome to Intentional Homeschooling. I'm Chantelle and today we're going to talk about summer school. So technically school for kids in school here in public school goes until the end of June, but here we are at the end of April and I think I'm declaring our homeschool year done for the year. I honestly would prefer to be done earlier and then start back up earlier. Once May hits, and any teacher will tell you this, I remember this as a teacher. That is the worst time to be teaching. Kids just want to be outside. Their brains are not on their schoolwork. They're out the window. And that's kind of how my kids are as well. So because we have so much flexibility, I figured why not just adjust to how it works for us. So we are going to be done our homeschool year at the end of this week and on to summer school. And I have a couple of plans for our summer school this year. Like we do homeschool all year round, but it does look different. And I usually share our homeschool plan for the summer here as well. And so I have a different plan than normal that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Before I get started though, I think I'm also going to be taking a little summer in quotation marks uh, vacation from here. I'm probably just going to be posting a little less in the last, in the next couple of months. Um, I don't want to say I'm like taking a complete break because if I have things I want to share, I want to be able to do that. Uh, but I also don't want to say I'm going to be posting a video every week or a podcast every week because I'm not sure that's what I want to do anyway. Plus right now I'm in the middle of organizing a homeschool summit, an online homeschool conference with a bunch of wonderful ladies who have similar homeschool styles, approaches, very eclectic, interest led, um, relaxed, very loose but they have like a homeschool that they love learning just because people are relaxed and eclectic doesn't mean that they don't learn and so i'm putting together a homeschool summit with these ladies and you can go ahead and sign up for the homeschool summit already it's going to be may 25th i'm very excited about it like i said there's gonna be a bunch of talks from similar styled homeschoolers and i think it's going to be a great resource for us homeschool moms to watch these videos over the summer, feel really refreshed and rejuvenated and ready for the fall once it comes. So if you're interested, I'll have the links for that below. But let's get on to our homeschool summer plan. So I've decided that this year, instead of having a daily or weekly checklist, my kids are going to have a monthly checklist and I have four big projects I have written down that I want them to do each month and they're going to be learning how to balance their time because I'm not telling them like you have to get this done by this exact date it has to be done by the end of the month they have a full month to do it I think maybe some of these things or some of the kids will leave things till the end and hopefully they can learn from their mistakes and get better at it throughout the summer. But I have four things that I want them to do. The first one should come as no surprise. It is read a book each month. And I have picked out four books for them. Of course, now the street sweeper is going by and nicely cleaning my street, but um, it's a little loud. So I'll start with my daughter's list of books. She is going into grade eight in the fall. And so I went and I picked pretty much a bunch of classics for her, books that are not going to be super hard to read, but they're going to stretch her. And I think we're going to have really good conversations from these. The first one is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I haven't read this one since I was in high school, probably like grade nine maybe we read this. And I don't remember a ton. So I'm going to be rereading probably all these books this summer as well. Um, but I'm looking forward to our conversations that we're going to have with this one. Next is my favorite, one of my favorite movies is the 1995, I think, version of this book. And the book is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And she was asking me about this book the other day and I mentioned that this book has a different ending than that movie. And we're going to read the book and then we're going to watch the movie. And we're not going to watch the Shirley Temple one. I've started that one, can't get through it, but I'm looking forward to rereading this book and re-watching the movie. I love the movie. It's so good. Okay, and then I went for a tearjerker. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Um, yeah, this one, I remember when I first read it, I just had tears streaming down my face. And I do make her read some sad books 
Bridge to Terabithia. There are some sad books I've thrown in there in the past, and this is the one for this summer. And the last one looks really big, but it's really not this big. It is The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis, and I have the annotated version. I do also actually have a bunch of books all over the floor behind me because I was just doing some other videos uh, earlier this week. Um, I do have a smaller, normal sized version of this book as well, which I think I'll probably let her choose which one she wants to read from or just give her the original so she doesn't get bogged down by the annotated version. But I'm very much looking forward to rereading, I think I've read this one like a few times, The Screwtape Letters. Such a good one. And then of course I've got four books for my son as well. None of these are really, I guess one is maybe considered a classic, I'll do that one first. The other ones are all more um, newer books. I wanted to get him to read a bunch of classics as well. But I just didn't think that he would really enjoy, I want to like be able to push him, but I also want to, him to enjoy what he's reading, and I just couldn't really find any. So I do have this one, Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. My daughter had a love-hate relationship when, with this book when she was his age. She, he is going into grade five in the fall. Um, she really liked the book, but I think she really wanted a different ending. Um, so she read it multiple times right around that age and so it's one that I want him to read now. And then she actually picked out a book for him to read as well. This is Be Best Family Ever by Karen Kingsbury. So this is the Baxter Family Children series. So she has an adult Christian contemporary, I don't know if they're like romance, I've never actually read them, series, but then she's taken those characters and she's told their stories when they were children. Um, and my daughter has enjoyed the series. I think the fourth book just came out earlier this year and she wants him to start in on it. Then I have a Victorian murder mystery story, middle grade. It's Premeditated Myrtle. This is a Myrtle Hardcastle mystery. This is the first book in the series and I have really enjoyed this and he likes mystery stories but he doesn't like the super typical little kid mystery story that's written so I think he'll enjoy this one. He has enjoyed the Eggie Morton series and they're very similar so I'm excited for him to read that one. And then the last one, I also went for a little bit of a tearjerker for him as well. This is Pax by Sarah Pennypacker. We did listen to the audiobook of this together as a family but I think he probably would have been in kindergarten or maybe even like four years old at the time so he doesn't remember anything. Uh, this is a story about a boy who has a pet fox and the boy has to go live with his grandfather while his dad enlists in the art in the military and they his dad releases the, they release the fox beforehand and it's it's kind of heartbreaking so i got him a, a tearjerker so they're going to read one of those books each month i don't know if our summer is actually going to be four months long we'll see but i got four books I'll let them pick which one they want to read when. And then we're either going to like discuss the books together or I'm going to get them to write like a one page something about it, something they liked, something they didn't, a summary. Um, I'm going to play that by ear a little bit. Then the second thing I'm going to be having them doing is picking a topic to research for that month. Now I have a research journal. Um, it is up in my shop and I don't think it is in my membership, but I'm going to be adding it right after this video. Um, and it is just a kind of like a guided journal. First you brainstorm a bunch of topics, then you pick one and it gives you some prompts to try to like write down what you already know, write down what you've learned. And I want my kids to each pick a different topic each month to research to try to see like where their interests lay, like maybe they'll pick a topic and they'll realize, oh, I really don't like this topic, or they'll pick a topic and they'll realize, oh, I want to know more, but like in this specific area, and then kind of dive in that way. Um, this is a great like method kind of like strewing, but it's strewing their own research. And so I'm going to be going to the library, getting them books, um, finding online resources for them. This will be kind of done together, but a lot of the putting it together is going to be on their own. Number three, I think this one's gonna be fun. I want them to create a finished video for me each month and I want it to be right around like the five minute mark or five minutes and longer and this can be whatever they want. My son is just at the point where he's learning video editing so this will 
require require more input from me teaching him how to do things. My daughter has been doing this for quite a while, so for her it will be easier, but I want her to push her creativity as well. So I was thinking they could make like a commercial for a product. I guess a five minute commercial might be long. Maybe they would make a couple different commercials and pile them, compile them together. Or I thought they could, you know, take a, me around the neighborhood and try to like act like a tourist or something. Or whatever they want to do. I just want, they could do a stop motion. I just want a five minute completed video. Just create a finished video product by the end of the month. And the fourth and last thing I want them to do is I want them to draw something. And I don't just mean like, you know, spend five minutes drawing something. I'm thinking something bigger. So they could draw like a comic strip, a, a book of comics. Art is not my forte. Neither do either of them really love it, but I think letting them explore it without the parameters of like, you have to draw this and just practicing their art is a good thing. I wish I would have had a little bit more freedom and a little less like, this is art class and today we're all drawing this exact thing and it has to look like this. Um, so I want them to continue to explore it, to push themselves, but I don't want to say, you know, this is exactly what you have to draw. So I'm going to be leaving this open for them, uh, but I want them to have a completed art project at the end of the month that they are proud of so and that you can tell that they've put a decent amount of effort and time into. So as of right now that is my summer homeschool plan. There is going to be things like nature walks, we might do some poetry tea time as well, but these are the things that I want them to do each month and these are things that are going to be helping them learn to budget their time and figure out how long assignments are going to take them and you know, find that balance between work and play. Hopefully if they play all the beginning of the month and then have to do all their stuff at the end of the month, they'll realize for the next month, okay, let's let's space it out a little bit more. This is, like I said, a little different than we've done with our summers in the past. We've done other things. I have other videos on YouTube sharing our summer plans that I can try to leave linked below. At least one of them. I might have two. Um, but I'm excited about this because I think with the ages and stages where my kids are at now, this is going to be a good stepping stone for them for even more independent learning. I would love to hear if you guys homeschool through the summer and what that looks like for you. <laughs>